hello and welcome to the session on motivation the concept of motivation and types motivation may be regarded as something which prompts compels and energizes an individual to act or behave in a particular manner at a particular time for attaining some specific goal or purpose functions of motivation motivation energizes and sustains the behavior of organism it sustains our interest and behavior for longer period in the activity according to hep efficiency and adequacy are increased in motivated state of affairs motives direct and regulate our behavior motivated state is often described as guided directed and goal oriented the motivated behavior moves in a specific direction the behavior of the organism is purposeful and persistent under motivated condition the behavior of the organism does not move in a haphazard way it is directed toward a selective goal which the individual sets for himself classification of motives one way to classify motivation is to distinguish primary motivations from secondary motivations primary motivations such as the desire for food and water serve obvious biological needs secondary motivations develop as a result of specific learning experiences they do not serve any biological need directly although they may lead indirectly to the satisfaction of primary motivations primary motivation and secondary motivations are analogous to unconditioned reinforces and conditioned reinforces we learn secondary motivations because they help us to satisfy primary motivations for example we learn a desire for money because it helps us to obtain food water and shelter in some cases however a secondary motivation seem to develop a momentum of its own becoming apparently independent of the original primary motivations associated with it for example someone may start collecting coins or stamps in hopes of making a profit or the collection leads to praise from other coin or stamp enthusiasts eventually some collectors devote enormous money and effort to their collections this demonstrates that they have become interested in the stamps for their own sake not just as means to make money or impress friends people may have an unlimited number of secondary motivations because the biological needs of the body are limited psychologists expect to find only a limited number of primary motivations intrinsic and extrinsic motivations intrinsic motivation is a motivation to engage in an act for its own sake it refers to a force within the individual and works from within an extrinsic motivation is based on the rewards and punishments the act may bring for example if you eat because you are hungry you are following an intrinsic motivation if you eat something you don't like in order to please the cook you are following an extrinsic motivation most of our behavior is motivated by a combination of intrinsic and extrinsic motivations an artist paints partly for the joy of creation that is intrinsic and partly for the eventual profit that is extrinsic in intrinsic motivation the activity carries its own reward and the individual takes genuine interest in performing the activity due to some inside motives and goals this type of motivation has real value in the learning task as it creates spontaneous attention and interest and sustains it throughout the intrinsic motivation is directly linked with natural instincts urges and impulses of the organism if people are given extrinsic reinforcement just for participating in an interesting activity they lose interest in that activity at least temporarily for example some college students in one experiment were asked to try to arrange seven plastic cards with complex shapes 
to match figures in a drawing. At one point, halfway through the experiment, students in the experimental group were paid for each correct match. Control group students did not know this. Then the experiment continued without pay for anyone. So long as students in the experimental group were being paid, they worked harder than the control group did. Results such as these illustrate the over justification effect. When people are given more extrinsic motivation than necessary to perform a task, their intrinsic motivation declines. Once the extrinsic motivation is removed, the task seems uninteresting. The over justification effect has been reported in a variety of settings among both children and adults. Paying people to do something they enjoy does not always undermine their enjoyment of it or their intrinsic motivation to improve their performances. In many cases, parents have to offer children some sort of inducement to get them to finish their homework, clean their room or do some other task. Theories of Motivation The Instinct Theory Under Darwin's influence, early theories viewed behavior is controlled by biological forces such as instincts, inborn patterns of behavior that are biologically determined rather than learned. But when it became clear that people were naming, not explaining, various behaviors by calling them instincts, psychologists turned to a drive reduction theory of motivation. Drive theories. Many theories view motivational forces in terms of drives. The drive concept appears in a diverse array of theories that otherwise have little in common such as psychoanalytic and behaviorist formulations. This approach to understanding motivation was explored most fully by Clark Hull in the 1940s and 1950s. Hull's concept of drive was derived from Walter Cannon's in the year 1932 observation that organisms seek to maintain homeostasis, a state of physiological equilibrium or stability. The body maintains homeostasis in various ways. Drive theories apply the concept of homeostasis to behavior. A drive is an internal state of tension that motivates an organism to engage in activities that should reduce this tension. These unpleasant states of tension are viewed as disruptions of the preferred equilibrium. According to drive theories, when individuals experience a drive, they are motivated to pursue actions that will lead to drive reduction. For example, the hunger motive has usually been conceptualized as a drive system. If you go without food for a while, you begin to experience some discomfort. This internal tension that is the drive motivates you to obtain food. Eating reduces the drive and restores physiological equilibrium. Incentive theories. Incentive theories propose that external stimuli regulate motivational states. An incentive is an external goal that has the capacity to motivate behavior. Ice cream, a juicy steak, a monetary price, approval from friends, an A grade on an exam and a promotion at work are all incentives. Some of these incentives may reduce drives, but others may not. Drive and incentive models of motivation are often contrasted as push versus pull theories. Drive theories emphasize how internal states of tension push people in certain directions. Incentive theories emphasize how external stimuli pull people in certain directions. According to drive theories, the source of motivation lies within the organism. According to incentive theories, the source of motivation lies outside the organism in the environment. This means that incentive models do not operate according to the principle of homeostasis which hinges on internal changes in the organism. Rather, incentive theories emphasize environmental factors and downplay the biological basis of human motivation. Arousal theory. 
seeking optimum activation when it became clear that people sometimes seek to increase rather than reduce the existing drives an alternative theory of motivation known as arousal theory was formulated. This theory focuses on arousal or general level of activation. Arousal theory suggests that what we seek is not minimal levels of arousal, but rather optimal arousal the level that is best suited to our personal characteristics and to whatever activity we are currently performing. Many studies offer at least indirect support for arousal theory. For example, there is often a close link between arousal and performance. Yerkes Dodson Lowe suggests that the level of arousal beyond which performance begins to decline is a function of task difficulty. Expectance theory. This theory suggests that behavior is pulled by expectations of desired outcomes rather than pushed from within by biologically based drives. Here focus is on cognitive processes in motivation is consistent with modern psychology widely used to explain work motivation. Goal setting theory. Another theory of motivation emphasizes on the view that motivation can be strongly influenced by goals. According to this theory, setting specific and challenging but attainable goals can boost motivation and performance, especially when individuals are committed to reaching the goals and receive feedback on their progress. Goal setting is highly effective in increasing performance, but mechanisms that explain these effects are still somewhat uncertain. Biological motives, these are also referred to as biogenic motives. These motives are not learned, they are natural innate. They are primary, vital, physiological and biological needs, which the person bring with him upon his entry into the world. Their fulfillment is indispensable and of prime importance. They are also necessary for the protection of life. The equilibrium of body and the mind is disturbed if they remain unsatisfied and it can be restored only when these needs are satisfied and the motives are hunger, thirst, sleep and sex. Social motives. These are also referred to as sociogenic motives. They are the resultant of social effect. They are complex motive states or needs that are wellsprings of many human actions. The secondary motives are achievement, affiliation and approval. Psychologists have tried to explain the process and mechanism of motivation in a number of ways. Some of the main viewpoints are discussed here. Behavioristic approach. Theoreticians under behavioristic approach argue that motivation is the why of behavior. They describe motivation through behavioral tendencies with regard to a given situation or situations. Motivation is the urge to act which results from a stimulus. The stimulus may be intrinsic or extrinsic. This motivation emerges from psychological situation which creates disequilibrium within the individual. When an individual moves towards a goal, he may be obstructed by a barrier and as a result, tension may be created. Release of tension is a motivating force. The successful completion of act works as a reinforcer which motivates further. The behaviorist theory of operant conditioning offers one of the clearest and most empirically supported views of motivation which says that human and other animals tend to produce behaviors that are rewarded by the environment and to avoid behaviors that are punished. According to Skinner, reinforcement means strengthening of behavior by giving the right kind of stimulus to the individual after he performs desirable behavior. To motivate involve either to reinforce the desired behavior by way of giving reward or not to reinforce the undesirable behavior. He mentions a number of reinforcers as positive, negative, primary and secondary reinforcers which are used to shape the behavior of the organism. 
Tontike introduced the concept of reinforcement in the form of law of effect, a motivational variable in psychology of learning. He proposed two important variables for motivation in learning on the basis of his puzzle box experiment. In his later writings, he emphasized the importance of readiness and belongingness as important variables for motivation. The law of readiness in fact is a motivational principle. This means a particular state of affairs will prove to be satisfying only to the extent that the subject is ready for it. Human motivation depends upon the characteristics of the individual as well as on his immediate circumstances, but in any event we must know the person's readiness. Hull and other behaviorists dealt with this issue through the concept of drive. When a condition arises for which action in the part of organism is prerequisite to optimum probability of survival of the individual or the species, a state of need is said to exist. Since a need either actual or potential usually precedes and accompanies the action of an organism, the need is often said to motivate the associated activity. Because of these motivational characteristics of needs, they are regarded as producing primary drives. All biological organisms have needs such as those for food, drink and sex. Unfulfilled needs lead to drives defined as states of arousal that motivates behavior. Drive reduction theories propose that motivation stems from a combination of drives and reinforcement. According to Guthrie, motives seem to arise primarily through learning. The problem of motives arises when it is necessary to explain how behavior becomes directed at certain ends and this is a matter of learning. Problems are persistent situations of such a nature that they keep animal or person disturbed and excited until some actors hit upon which removes the maintaining stimuli and allows the excitement to subside. Such persistent and disturbing stimulus is called drive. Drive or motives then are conceived as stimuli and are important mainly because they activate the individual and make him respond until the maintaining stimuli are eliminated. The reoccurrence of the drive stimuli will rent to re-evoke the previously successful act. Psychoanalytic approach. Freud's psychoanalytic theory is centered around his concepts of instincts and the unconscious. Freud maintained that instincts are the root cause of all activities in a human being. He presented four prominent characteristics of instincts. These are described below. Source. It is a somatic process in a particular organ or part of the body from where a stimulus is produced. This stimulus is represented in the psyche by an instinct. Impetus. It is the impulsive strength of the instinct. Aim. The aim is to get pleasure. This can be achieved by doing away with the conditions of stimulation at the source. Object. The object is that in which or through which the instinct can achieve its aim. He identified two instincts, death instinct and life instincts. In his book, An Outline of Psychoanalysis, he asserted that erotic instinct and death instinct or the desire to destroy even to the extent of destroying oneself is ultimate sources of motivation. In fact, the life instincts, the urge of self-preservation dominates the earlier scenes of one's life. When the life instinct ceases to operate, the death instinct takes over. What moves or energizes the activities of the life instincts is a need for sexual gratification and a sex motive therefore is quite an important motive. Freud revolutionized the theory and practice of psychology by proposing unconscious motivation as an explanation of behavior. The key to the why of behavior lies in the choice 
made by one's unconscious which are usually the gratification of sex or the seeking of pleasure. The libidinal wishes are first expressed directly through the primary processes of it. Most of these primitive wishes are not fulfilled and therefore, tensions are built up. For reductions of tensions, it partially is transformed to ego and with the help of secondary process, the ego resolved these tensions. While releasing tensions to the external world, the ego becomes selective and uses the past experiences of failures. The outside world is not only the physical world, the social reality is also there. A special aspect of ego, the superego has been conceived for this purpose and deals with it. Therefore, we find that when the lower level functioning of the personality fails, then only comes the higher level functioning of personality. All this happened for achieving the release of tensions. Freud has dealt with anxiety in great details and contends that in certain cases, they are the cause or motive of our behavior. When the organism's anxiety is stimulated from outside, we call it real anxiety, but the threat may be from unconscious stimulation. This also causes anxiety which is called neurotic anxiety. Achievement motivation. The need to achieve is the springboard of the achievement motive. This desire is as basic and natural as the other biological or socio psychological needs. However, in a competitive society or setup, the desire to excel over others or achieve a higher level than one's peers is intensified. This in turn may lead to a stronger drive or motive to achieve something or everything that is essential to beat the others in the race and consequently experience a sense of pride and pleasure in the achievement. The type of motivation produced by such desire for achievement is called the achievement motivation and has been defined in various ways. According to Atkinson and Feather, the achievement motive is conceived as a latest disposition which is manifested in overt striving only when the individual perceived performance as instrumental to a sense of personal accomplishments. Irving Sarnoff defined achievement motivation in terms of the ways an individual orients himself towards objectives or conditions that he does not possess. If he values those objects and conditions and he feels that he ought to possess them, he may be regarded as having an achievement motive. Based on these definitions, we can say that the achievement motive moves an individual to strive to gain mastery of difficult and challenging situations or performances in the pursuit of excellence. It comes into the picture when an individual knows that his performance will be evaluated, that the consequences of his actions will lead either to success or failure and that good performance will produce a feeling of pride in accomplishment. The achievement motive may thus be considered to a disposition to approach success or the capacity to take pride in accomplishment when success is achieved in an activity. People with a strong need for achievement prefer to set goals that are high but realistic. Given such a goal, they will work as hard as possible. In contrast, people with a low need for achievement or a strong fear of failure prefer goals that are either easy to achieve or so difficult that they provide a ready excuse for failure. Almost everyone is motivated to achieve a goal if the goal is realistic, if the person gets feedback on his or her efforts to reach the goal. Children begin showing delight in their accomplishments before two years. Preschool children are highly optimistic about their own abilities. After they enter school, they learn the meaning of failure and start to show discouragement. Let me summarize the session. This chapter provides a detailed picture of motivation. The concept and classification of motives are discussed. Different theories such as behaviorist 
and psychoanalytic theories of motivation are described. The chapter also discusses the concept of achievement motivation. Now, you can try to answer the questions given here. What are the functions of motivation? What is intrinsic motivation? How does intrinsic motivation differ from extrinsic motivation? What is extrinsic motivation? What are the educational implications of achievement motivation? Now, you can refer the books listed here. An outline of psychoanalysis in 1953 by Freud, Hogarth Press, London. Social Psychology in 1908 by McDougall, Maitin, London. Motivation, Theories and Issues in 1975 by Valley F.P., Brooks Cole, California. Thank you for watching this program. We can meet again with another topic. Till then, take care.